Hello, let me get back to a practical example of where we can use uh, this so called uh, 3D printing or rapid prototyping versus the conventional prototyping. So, I will give you two examples. For example, here you see uh, it is called a full planetary drive. So, we have three elements here we have a planet carrier, then we have the sun gear, I am sorry, we have the sun gear and then we have the ring gear. So, it is also differential. Not long ago, meaning about um, 30 years back, building it was not easy to the extent that so many parts had to be assembled together. Now, this is one place where your uh, 3D printing helps a lot. If I can imagine a project, I will call the whole assembly a project, imagine the sequence of the various parts, the way it is assembled. I can have a beautiful this thing including and you see here all the gears everything are there, everything is beautifully sitting there without the anything and there are no axles, there are no metal and it works. Now, comes the important thing, where do we use such a thing? In a place like uh, say electromechanics where you know simple lab demonstrations all that it does make sense, there is no issue about it. But if you go to practical real life examples, this is taken from a fan motor, a pedestal fan motor. So, here, here a lot of details about how the impeller or the fan is fitted, then you have the motor itself at the back you have a small mechanism to do other things other than running the propeller or the impeller. This is where generally I will show you if possible on the internet later, we have a reduction drive to make this whole thing oscillate about this plane at a very slow things. Right now, it is not uh, what you call you do not have too much of control on the speed of oscillation or the total angle of oscillation. So, we just try to reduce it here and then have a fixed pivot and then we have something here and then when it moves this whole thing moves like that. Same thing when it is suspended from a ceiling instead of having this worm drive probably something like this will make sense. So, as it rotates here slowly, I mean as it rotates fast here the last portion rotates slowly and if it is mounted on gimbal movement this whole thing can move like this. Now, comes the important thing we end up with classical example of what do we with small containers like this? This container is probably I do not know what it is long long ago we used to get films in it what you call 35 mm silver uh, argent films used to come in this celluloid films and later on important things got replaced by metallic advantage of this it is soft and uh, you can also rotate it and then you can do whatever you want with it disadvantage it will break whatever you do the whole thing will break. In contrast this one is rigid and it can take any amount of beating. This for some other reason traditionally these have been coming in this sort of things and it says mints impact mints. Mints are that small things people chew and it was imperative at one time that you package them in this tin cans or tin boxes. Now, this tin box can easily be replaced by this there is no issue about it. However, when it comes to some other special applications like this we still have a small problem. You have a worm drive directly a worm wheel which is fitted on this axis. Now, this worm wheel on this axis makes sense, but as the reduction keeps increasing you end up with the, the last pinion having to take tremendous amount of torque and by definition pinions are small compared to the gear. The assembly I have later I will show you at the end of the lecture we have the small pinion and then you have the big gear tremendous torque is seen by the last member often it fails. 
before I get back to that I will show you another simple example where traditionally we have been using this rapid prototyping. You see this is the picture of a same bottom portion of this buck converter. Okay, oh, in this case, uh, it is a step up module, I am sorry, then it is a small boost converter, step up module with adjustable booster power supply. The issue being it comes like this, hmm? then can you show this? You see here, this is the tiny small thing, I need to make a box which will carry this, and this herein lies the problem. The problem is it is not just about a box. Now, back to the monitor. We need power supply control of switching losses and provide a heat sink. You see here at the bottom, can you see at the bottom what we have here? Part of this has a uh, small landing where this side of the heat sink there is a power device here with a switching uh, regulator I mean rather switcher and then you have a a small landing area in which you have through holes which are metallized. Now, the application note says this can supply safely a certain current given a certain input output voltage differential and the total losses while favorable conditions the efficiency is 95 percent and you have 5 percent losses some conditions may occur where the losses are higher. Now, we need to dissipate heat of the order of a watt or more. So, there is a tendency for it to tendency for this to get hot. So, in spite of all this being done they have made a provision here by which we are expected to attach a heat sink to this. Now, further going back I need to do something to make a, an enclosure to put it inside because the whole thing is exposed you see here I have a positive output terminal negative output term in I am sorry positive output and negative output similarly negative in and positive in and then these two other holes are for the mounting. Now, if I go back to the catalog details everything we want to have want from the printed circuit board footprint has been given here. One of the first things they have given here you will notice is can you see outside size 13.18 millimeters and 21.08. So, you can round it off to 22 by 13 or logically it is probably 1 inch 25 into little more than half inch say 3 eighth inch and a little data also is given about the mounting hole. Can you see here? there is a mounting hole here with a, a what you call offset from the that place similarly offset from here and given all these dimensions saying you have 6.604, 6.604 it is given this 13 minus all these uh, what do you call uh, millimeter there seems to be some error. <laughs> so, it is possible for us to get back into what do you call uh, yeah uh, that was a mistake actually 39.47. So, this is 43.18 it is not uh, this thing. So, we know the center distance of these vertical distance of these holes and all that now on the other monitor the other dimension that has not been given is if you look at this see here what has not been given is we have lot of these active devices. If you are to make a enclosure for it, very critical thing about height of the modules have not been given. 
while in the pad dimension it is valid now you see here there is a slight variation from the actual you see here now this is where I need this vernier and I need to take authentic dimensions of what are the components whatever is specified here can easily be verified this is correct there is no issue about it similarly there is no issue about it and there is not much of a problem about the size of the heat sink and all these things, but we do have a problem or we have a this thing about what to do with this large capacitors. You notice here these capacitors are slightly larger than what has been shown in the catalog. Now quickly I will try to follow the dimensions that are given here in this and see what best I can do and most important is how best to deal with the heat is there a way in which I can deal with the heat given this. So, if you go to my other uh, what I call computer where I have got this open I start with basic outline that is given here in this case it says 43.18 millimeters. So, I start a line. vertical it says 21. So, I am conveniently I can round it off to 22 I have my basic what do you call um, printed circuit board ready. This is where I will be probably forced to go back to this whole uh, this thing and in my case just for the sake of convenience quickly you need not uh, worry about it I will uh, it is it reads 14 mm. So, I will make two circles which are 15 mm height here and diameter is yeah it is 8 mm. height of each capacitor reads uh, 12 point uh, something that is a little about this thing. So, I will make it as these two I will extrude them to make See, this is the the PCB with the most prominent components that is the what do you call uh, capacitors which are projecting out are mentioned here. And uh, very quickly, let me go over to uh, yeah, forty-three 
0.2 minus 13.2 which will come to I think I need to punch up the calculator. The mounting holes are uh, 30 mm apart. So, I will come here and add uh, two mounting holes to my drawing and uh, mounting holes here look like uh, they are 3 mm holes. And then if I go to the other direction, same thing it says uh, yeah. Five mm, five mm twenty one minus 5 mm is 16 mm ok. So, I need to draw one more line So, I am ready with a what I would say a basic uh, concept of how to mount this printed circuit. I will uh, remove these uh, what you call all these uh, reference lines which are of not uh, much use for me right now. I can get back to it. I can now make two openings in this. see these two. I need to extrude them so that I can continue with a
see I have managed to get a opening that is required right. This is the what you call a device which I have on which I now need to build uh, the what you call a uh, box around it. Invariably all our rapid prototyping exercise will be related to how to take reasonable measurements and then how to what you call try to build a, an enclosure about it. So, right now at the very first level I will try to just stick to this thing here and then try to just draw a line. See, I have got a reasonably good starting point for a for making a small enclosure. Now, I will pick these two which are then you, you will naturally will ask the question sir is there any basis for it? Yes, basis is what is a reasonably practical thickness that we can build up in a rapid prototyping setup typically in a 3D printing. So, that you need to consult the manual and then something which is also a little related to this is how much of uh, what do you call uh, strength which is uh, related to say I will take a extrude a planar curl straight and make sure that this covers it see already I have a starting point for my enclosure for this. It is fairly easy is it not except that you may notice that uh, this box does not seem to have a bottom. It is both a bug and partly intentional. So, one variant of it which does not need a heat sink can probably be open on one side and this need to be made with a metallic or aluminum piece. So, it is easy I have a so mean that they have in the if you see the this catalog here I am sorry this one you see this dotted line this is the place for the heat sink. So, how do I play with the heat sink easiest thing is I go about measuring it I see that uh, on the this piece which I have which I unfortunately no I cannot uh, show you, but still you can uh, see it I will try my best to see whether I can tilt it and yeah yes uh, it is better to measure on the top. See that from one edge it is about uh, 11 mm. So, I will take it as 10 mm and then from uh, other edge it is safe to take 22 mm. So, I have 10 mm and 22 mm once again as before I go back to my original drawing here try to draw lines to build up the those things here. So, the heat sink can probably start here from this side. Twenty two mm. That that area represents the total amount of pad that I need to give, and then I can go inside also a little, and then this again shows fourteen mm. So I'll take one more line here, make it fourteen mm. Thank you. 
if you see this small rectangular area that forms a tab which is supposed to touch it. Please show this sir. You see here and added to this we have a small problem of there are there being the leads here though in the front it is clearly a surface mount or SMT type of a printed circuit board. This large capacitors and then this uh, what do you call uh, pot I think uh, it is a Beckman pot this Beckman and uh, these things still continue to come in lead through hole variants. So, this hole if I now take a what you call height uh, think about it yeah it is very small. still a minimum of 1 mm is needed on this. So, if I were to keep it on a what you call on a flat surface and measure it measure the height I will see that about 1 mm gap is there in between. So, I need to make a heat sink tab which is which just forms this this small area which I have here. Let me just take it out. This is the basic heat sink tab which I need at the back so that it makes a contact this whole thing I will make it into a oh I need to a little bit of uh, further trick I will get on to it later I will join this whole thing make it into a plane or make it into a solid. Can you see slowly? That small heat sink tab is sitting at the back of it. Now comes our uh, this thing. Now, if you see, if you see the materials carefully, even if you were to take uh, a power supply like uh, the one I have here. have a look at this power supply. This is taken from my computer it says YO which is I mean typically. So, if you are to open one of them at least some of the power supplies invariably had a big heat sink sheet here and because of various practical purposes the whole thing is enclosed and these days uh, several of these plastics are capable of taking higher temperature and if you can make it touch a lot of heat can be made to lose from this. 